Hey y'all, how you doing, how you doing? Um, my name is Jonathan Michelle. Welcome to Sana Online. And this is your lesson about creating Caribbean bass lines, composing Caribbean bass lines, um, understanding them better, how to process them through the lens of black American music. Um, and, um, and that's what I'm here to help you do. I am here again with Sana Online, uh, shout out to them and their great series. Um, I'm here with my Lakeland bass. Shout out to them and their great instruments. Um, and I'm here with me. Uh, and I'd love to tell you a little bit more, more about myself. I'm actually, I was born and raised in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, my parents are immigrants to this country from a country in the Caribbean uh, known as Aitsi. Aitsi is the ancestral name for Haiti. Um, my parents immigrated here to the States in the early 70s and um, they met here and then eventually after getting married in New York they moved to Connecticut and that's where I was born. Um, so that's that part of the story. Um, I grew up playing music at home and in church. The church I went to was, uh, was one where uh, it was a French speaking church, it was a Haitian church in, in Connecticut. So I spent a lot of time playing uh, sacred music uh, of traditional styles, like four part harmony style. And then I also played a lot of the uh, spiritual music and uh, liturgical music from, from IIT, from Haiti. And so that's where my, just sort of the base of my knowledge comes from when it comes to Caribbean music is just playing it. So I guess that would be the first thing I would share with you is if you want to get better at writing Caribbean bass lines, playing Caribbean bass lines, or Caribbean music in general, uh, find a way to play it. Um, I was playing it once a week, basically for the for you know for the first thirteen to ten to thirteen years that I was playing music. So um, a lot of the things that I I've learned came from playing in the community and um, having to learn new songs because of church service and things like that. Um, and then I came to know uh, American music, black American music from the United States um, after sort of later in life. I mean, I guess I was listening to a lot of different things, but as far as my own pursuits, when I started to learn about um, music that they call jazz, uh, the, the, this black American tradition of uh, you know, Miles Davis, which means I met, learned about Paul Chambers and Ron Carter, and um, then I learned about Jaco Pastorius, and I learned about Victor Bailey, and it goes on and on, you know? Um, so then I was, I had this, this base knowledge of Caribbean music, but I had a sort of like innate connection to what was happening on the swing side of things, you know? Um, and with that, I just pursued it more and uh, almost, sort of independently of each other uh, for a while I was very much uh, by the time so I learned started learning about jazz music and about uh, the blues uh, and about things like that probably around 13 14 years old and by the time I was knee deep in it and you know getting my daily dose of uh, Jackie McLean and learning about Roy Hargrove I wasn't actually playing in church anymore and I was in college and so I was, now I was listening to Haitian music for enjoyment um, and kind of learning that way, not really playing it as much. Um, but then I was knee deep 
completely immersed in the in that world you know um, after college I moved to Philadelphia where I got even deeper in the world of the black American music tradition and seeing the connections between the swing beat and what we call pocket feel and funk and all those things and how they all co-mingle and it was then that I started to really uh, try to figure out well how does how does my my background fit into my understanding of this music you know like why is it that I can take so well to the OJ's and Jimmy Heath and you know Jimi Hendrix you know what is you know what is it in my background because I didn't have all those things necessarily growing up but I was listening to you know uh, the music of the Haitian tradition you know um, so then upon moving to New York is really where I dove headfirst and I've, I've been collaborating within the community with other Haitian musicians like Godwin Lee and Melanie Charles and organizations like Haiti Cultural Exchange to really like dive in and see what the connection is for myself um, between black American music and the music of Haiti. Um, and then also working with, uh, I m must mention this, working with uh, Etienne Charles, who's a wonderful trumpet player and composer and educator. He has done a great job of composing for, uh, composing and melding the music of his native Trinidad with the uh, training and uh, compositional styles and tradition and cultural traditions of black American music and being with him and seeing seeing that also opened my eyes and now here we are today and I'd like to share with you how what my process is um, in another time we can get kind of deeper into the specifics but I want to just share with you just a couple things in our time of some sort of si some benchmarks that you can set for yourself that I realized in hindsight I was able to use to uh, use my the knowledge that I have and uh, that I trained with in black American music to synthesize and to process what I what I'm doing on the uh, Haitian side or on the Caribbean side um, and in the end actually composing bass lines so coming from a place of listening to music and listening to the styles and all the things that must come together uh, to make it happen and then now being in a position to actually uh, create and compose the bass lines that are going to be part of whatever musical canon that you're a part of in that moment or at that time. Um, I think that I will share just a little bit with you right now as in our little intro part just to uh, kind of let, let you know where I'm going. So like um, when I was early on <laughs> probably uh, I've, I've told this story a bunch of times, um, but the way I got to playing bass was that my church needed a bass player, and I was playing guitar at the time, and my dad volunteered me to play bass and got me a bass, and that was that's how it went down. And like two weeks later, I was playing at service, you know. Um, but one of the one of the first things that I did outside of church was playing in a band of my cousins, and. Um, there was a there was a, there was a song that they wanted to play off of a record, and it was like probably the craziest bass line I'd heard at the time, and um, and it took me a while to get together, and it was fun. And in thinking about this lesson, this time that we're going to spend together, I thought that it would be cool to share it with you, and then see uh, in real time sort of like how I could make it work on all sides of things. So there's a few different things that we're going to try to keep in mind. I'm actually going to do those things now. I did it a little bit earlier too by with Bourbon Street Parade, but we'll do it in a, in a shorter, more concise, concise way here. Um, so the, t the tune, uh, the, the, so the bass line was something like a, so one, two, three, and, uh, and. That, that was it, that was it. Let's try one more time. Two, three, and. Right? 
Right? So that's, that's the line. And then, um, so then I asked myself, like, oh, what would that sound like if you were going to, if you're going to swing that, you know? Um, and so I think it would feel something like this. How do we do that? How do we get to making it feel okay, you know what I mean, in all different, in these different styles? Um, I will really quickly make sure to reference this. Uh, Barry Stevenson has a great workshop uh, with Sana online. And the next thing I'm going to share is actually something that he shared from his workshop that I think uh, is really important. When we're thinking about playing bass lines in different styles, it's all about the subdivision of that time, you know, whether it's 4-4 four, four time or uh, duple time, you know, any, any sort of time, it's all about what's happening with the subdivisions um, in whatever given style of music. And uh, because that's going to inform what you do in between what we as, uh, I'm talking to bass players now, what we're doing in these various styles of music is kind of similar. You know, we play two beat or we play on all beats or we do some sort of syncopation. The syncopation will be based upon the subdivisions of the rhythm of the cultural music that you're playing. Um, so with, with that in mind, that's where we're headed right now. We're headed towards sort of specific, not sort of, we're, we are headed towards this, this a specific style now. We're moving towards Haitian music, we're moving towards Caribbean music. Even still, we're gonna, this is gonna be kind of general to give you sort of a taste of what we're gonna get to. Um, so in this, in this next section, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, where our emphasis lies in general, you know? Um, when we play swing, I mean, even when we're counting something off, we say one, two, one, two, three, four, and that, that gives us sort of like an emphasis on two and four that we're gonna carry out throughout this feel. Um, and so I will say very generally that we're looking to emphasize beats one and three inside of these Caribbean spaces. Um, and take this into your listening, just like right now, like you could just stop this video right now and go listen to something that you is, that that is uh, that has Caribbean roots, and you'll find that just thinking about emphasizing one and three in your listening and in your timekeeping will also will immediately start get to get you locked into um, the feel that you're going for, you know. Um, so one and three is okay. I know that there's a there's there's a lot, and it can actually confuse me. I'm not going to lie to you <laughs> when I was coming up because. Um, I'm, I came up being used to clapping on one and three, but I also listened to enough and was part of American culture enough to know that two and four is a vibe, you know? Um, but please do know that when you're listening and when you're counting off, uh, uh, for our musicians, when you're counting off music from that part of the, the diaspora and emphasis on one and three will help to make the f make it feel better. So whereas you would say one, two, one, two, three, four, if I'm counting, so I'm I'm here. I'm going one, two, one, two, three, four, boom. You see that? So we're here. One, two, one, two, three, four. Ha! Swing. Uh, 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 uh. One, two, one, two, three, four. You know. So we've already just in that in that one space before we've even started to play the music, it already feels a little, feels like the pocket is is in the right place, you know. So when you are 
when you're listening and when you're processing and you're going to sit down and do this, when it's not necessarily in your native cultural space, that's something for you to think about. So coming up, I'm going to play some examples for you of bass lines that are fairly simple rhythmically, um, but with their syncopation and their emphasis is on beats one and three. Um, these will be available at the Sanaa website for download, so please do check that out. And check this out, here we go. So these examples that we're gonna play, um, you, can, you can find them on the Sanaa website. We're going to play them, and with each exercise you'll see a set of rules, the parameters, so that you can be, you can f focus in on what we were just talking about, about framing beats one and three and doing it in a way that feels nice and confident and grooving. Um, so I'm gonna say this, read these uh, guidelines very quickly. First one is set your metronome to 82 BPM. Each click represents a quarter note of time. Tap your foot on beats one and three and play the exercises on one single note of your choice. After playing all the exercises with one single note, play through again, alternating that note with the fifth above and the fifth below. All right, so that's what we're gonna do here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna kinda work through them all and then you can see where I'm, what's happening with me. Okay, so we're gonna pick, uh, let's see here, what should we pick? What's the chart? Oh, say this is, this is D, so we'll stay on D, right? So 82 is happening in my ears and so I'm clipping Clicking, sorry, tapping my foot to here. I'm at one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right? So we're there. And we'll start. Two, three, and one, two, three, four. 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 So one thing to keep in mind is that you're working on all of this in a vacuum so that you can establish something new. So with the, it might feel a little bit dry at the moment, but we're gonna add elements and you'll see how it all works out. So now, wh where I'm gonna go is that I'm gonna add an element of the subdivision within my, within my head and I'll, sh I'll share that with you and then maybe you can hear it a little bit more in my playing. Um, so if this is a quarter note, we're saying one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But I'm thinking a typical Haitian subdivision is this, three, four. Right? So now, here I go, I'm thinking that, and I'm gonna go, one, two, three, four. Do, 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 do. So uh, once again, we're here, we say, and we go, one, two, three, four. 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 Right? And we try it uh, again, we say, bo, do, 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 do. You see, so already with the subdivision, framing that one and three makes sense. Now let me see if I could, just for ha-has, let's see how that feels with two and four. Let's see if I could do it. Uh, this is this is a on the mic challenge, I guess, huh? One, two, three, four. Da 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 da. Funny enough, that actually kind of fits within the context of uh, tension and release and a couple of different things. It's def that absolutely happens within the context of Caribbean music, so I don't want to say that it doesn't. Um, but it's sort of the thing that happens to, to build that tension and to have a release where we come back around to something. So that felt better than I thought it would. 
um, but let's 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 stay on. Um, so let's try groove number two. We're gonna keep the same note. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. One, two, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two. Again, and one, two. You know, so we'll think the same thing. Here we go. Da 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 da. You know, so that's that's where we're headed. We're just we're just playing through these lines to see how they feel with our emphasis on one and three. You know, and let's try groove number three now. One. So there it is. So that's the first the first couple of exercises. Um, then we're going to go back and we'll do. Let's see here. Um, let's just go back to groove one. And now we're going to add uh, a, a note that is a fifth above and see what that feels like. So one, two, three, four. So adding the singing of my subdivision is bringing context to what's happening for our given purposes. But when you're starting this, the what I'd like for you to keep in mind is that if it feels dry, you're doing it right, is basically what I'm saying. As long as you're keeping in mind our parameters, you'll be able to apply this when the time comes. Um, so that's grooves one, two, three, and four. You want to add the fifth above and below uh, to bring a little bit of variety, but keep these parameters for your development and your growth. I hope that the uh, last section made sense to you all, and please feel free to reach out to me uh, with any questions that you have. I'd love to be part of your journey of getting to understand Caribbean music better. Um, but for now, we'll move on to our to the next part. So one thing that I feel um, helps to have a, a baseline that feels good is to keep in mind that it's more important to play or I, I think that if you were to prioritize playing a, less notes and prioritize your rhythm, what do I mean by that? So uh, when I say less, less notes, meaning in a chord, if we're playing the key of D, we have those notes to choose from, but we could also choose this note, we could choose this note, we could choose this note, you know. Um, so we have tw we have 12 notes that we could choose from. Um, and what I'm saying is pick less of those notes and prioritize the rhythm. Um, one thing I've learned in my s sort of re informal research in my studies as a musician is that many times in a, in a drum orchestra or in any kind of dance music, the low drum um, really just carries 
many times there, it is pitched, you know, in, in, in Brazilian cultures and some in African cultures, various African cultures, the lowest drum is pitched. And that's where we're getting our sort of function from as bass players. So playing a huge variety of notes isn't necessarily what you need to get to when you're going to play as part of this music. You want to be playing a role in the band, which is to provide this this bottom, you know, to provide the the parameters and the structure of what's happening. You're still in a com composition space. You can still compose, but you're composed. But you've got parameters around your about around that. But with that comes the free comes freedom as well, right? So your 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 parameters are just kind of helping you to see which lanes it is that you can go 100 miles an hour in. Um, so that's what we're gonna that we're gonna explore that that concept. Um, so, going back, I'm going to go back to that to that to that line um, that I that I learned early on in, in my playing, and uh, I don't really remember what key we're in. So we're going to go do it in E flat. <laughs> and you're like, well, John, that's got that's got a lot of notes, you know. <laughs> And but this wasn't this wasn't the the uh, the entire groove, but this this was it's sort of an intro line, you know. But then but then when we got into it, here we go, we go. So there. I played mostly roots and fifths. I played a third there, and I played something passing. So let's try it again and even simplify it more. Two, three, four. Mm -mm, and, uh. Yeah, and I'll try one more time. Let's do another thing. Let's see here. Uh, maybe we could play something like uh, uh, right, we'll play. So we we'll play a little Saint Thomas, and that's something that we play. We we, we play a bunch, um, and so if I'm going to put my my sort of compa lens on on, on Saint Thomas, it's going to sound like this. <laughs> So there, I just tried to prioritize playing my two beat feel and making sure that that felt con consistent all the way through. Because in my, I mentioned earlier about the low drum, I think that that's something to keep in mind because of the consistency with which that that low drum has to play to support everything that's happening. So it's not just, we are not just playing the lowest notes, but we're also sort of playing the lowest groove for everything to be built off of. So when you're thinking about it that way, it's it's it can be distracting. So now I'm playing, I'm gonna go play St. Thomas again and see if you can find where the distractions are, even when, if and when they feel good, because I kind of know what I'm doing, right? Two, three. that felt really just fine, but that's just one chorus of St. Thomas. About 17 choruses of that later, that's not going to feel as great because you're, we're not providing, and I'm also playing by myself, playing with other people who are who are there to provide those things with drums or horns or keys or guitar or vocal, you know, and we're talking about our, our role as bass players. We want to make sure that we're filling those shoes very well before we start to venture off into other other parts of it. 
you know, so here we go, Th St. Thomas again, and maybe I'll, this time I'll, I'll add some sort of, some things that are appropriate in their, in, in their time, and then we'll move on to some examples. So here we go, two, three, so we're going to hit these examples again you could find these you can find these examples on the Sonat website, um, and you can you can download them uh, and go through it at your own leisure. We there are guidelines with each example, so you can kind of work through all of them. This first example, uh, this is this is going to be different than the last thing because the last thing was really just sort of rhythmic based. This here is about dealing with chord changes and how to actually begin to compose something. Um, how, some rhythms that you could base your compositions off of. Um, and, and how to deal with what I said before, which is choosing uh, less notes to carry the rhythm, to carry the syncopation. Uh, this first one here is gonna be at 133 BPM and it's, uh, yeah, you'll see. It's very simple chord changes, and I'll read them here, and then we'll see how it goes here. So our first note choice is root, just the root, right? Working through, it's a four bar phrase, so we'll play it twice. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's that. So now we say uh, our note choices now are going to be root, fifth, and root and fifth. That's it. Let's see how that goes. One, two, one, two, three. Uh. So already we've got a little bit of variety without really having to do anything outside of our uh, anything outside of our roots and fifths. You know, we got we've got it happening. It feels good. And also remember that we're part of a whole when we're doing this. When we're practicing at home, sometimes it's hard to remember that. You know, when we actually apply this, it's going to be as part of a whole, part of a unit. Um, that's so. If we just focus on what we're focusing on, we'll get it done. Um, so that's root and fifth. Now we're going to, now our challenge is using notes from the triad, so root, root third and fifth, to make this feel good uh, while maintaining our rhythmic integrity. So let's see here. One, two, one, two, three, four. So we've so that feels good. We're just picking notes and pick, going around. So this is this is what you can do, and with example one from this section here, is just go around and this is just on root beats one and three, and see what it feels like going through a progression. Let's see if we could think of one here. Um, uh, something that could that could fit this. How oh sure. How about autumn leaves? One, two. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's how that works. So that's example one. I wanted to be sure to share this part with you. Um, when I say less notes, more dance, it's not a reference to um, the, um, like the amount of notes that are being played by you. Uh, it's met, it was more of a reference towards the note choices it's because this next rhythm, that we're, this next example has quite a few notes involved um, in a short period of time, but I think that you'll get the, the groove part of it once you settle into that these are the note choices that you're making for the groove, you know. Um, and the idea that it's a, re it's a repetitive thing, the groove is coming from the re repetition of these notes that you're choosing. Um, and these notes that you're choosing are a rhythmic choice as opposed to a harmonic choice, I think is the thing that we're looking to emphasize here. Um, so this is an example two. Uh, we've got the metronome at 145. And here we go. One, two, one, two, one, and two. So that's our groove. And you could hear that like instinctually I played some sort of syncopation on the other side just so that we could feel that space and not feel necessarily that we need to feel, need to fill it, but that it will be filled and that it's, it's like part of the thing that's making the dance, you know? Um, so now our note choices are changing and it's root fifth. Root fifth are our note choices, note choices. So here we go, one, two, one, two, three, uh. So that's our root fifth option. And you see, like, once we start adding a couple notes, it already feels cool. So what if we do something like this? Anyways, so that's me combining those first two, right? Uh, our next choice is uh, root fifth sevenths, right? So we've got a three note choice on a four note groove. So how are we going to do that? One, two, one, two, three, four. So there, I made some note choices. I looked at the harmony, and I realized that it is a F6 chord. So instead of playing root fifth seventh, I played root fifth six. You know, so those are the kind of changes that you can make based on the harmony, and it makes your job a little bit easier as a bass player. You're able to make your choices based on rhythm and then work around the harmony and it's going to stay there it's going to stay consistent it's going to stay consistent for that dance that's what we want to do we want to get those people dancing we got to get our souls moving you know so that's what we're that's what we're working towards here less notes more dance yeah so the last thing that i'm going to do is put together the three different note choice parameters that you have without within this within this uh example here example two um so here we go one two one, two, three, four.
Yeah. So that's that's that. You'll hear that I added a little bit of something towards in those in those empty spaces. Um, again, sort of things that are stylistically okay and within the syncopation of what we're doing. Um, just so you can kind of hear the examples, but please, when you're doing these, as much as you can, stick to the parameters of the example as to train your mind and your body to be ready for the on the on the spot learning that you will inevitably do when you go to play this music. There's so much to learn when you're in the space. So it's really important to uh, focus in your own practice time on your individual responsibilities so that you're not thinking about that on the bandstand. So this next example is uh, sort of what I was talking about before, again, where you're gonna see a lot of notes that you're gonna play, but the re repetition is what makes the groove happen. And not just the repetition, but as you see the way that we apply the different notes that we choose. So it's not just an arbitrary choice of a third or a six or an octave, but it's the way that we apply it within the context of the song. So this one, here we go. This is in D flat. One, two, three, four. So that's just the roots kind of providing this, this thing. And when it comes to when you pick a line like that, a, a line, when you write a line like that, that's a little bit busier, you, there needs to be some variety in the line or else the, the monotony is not, is not going to help either. There's a fine line that, you've, that you want to draw where the line has life to it. It's not just a monotonous drone but the monotony has to be, there needs to be some monotony for the consistency. It needs to be consistent, not monotonous, I guess we should say. That's a good way to keep it. You know, it's not about monotony, it's about consistency. So now we're gonna try to find a consistency that makes this line like really pop. So our first our first option is octave, and I would I think this is, this is probably my favorite one of the options. Here we go, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now, there's a couple a couple examples. I'm gonna skip the root six, and we're gonna go right to the, I've got an example here called third root fifth. All right, so we're talking third root fifth. Okay, let's try that. One, two, three, four. So again, um, no one single baseline will necessarily be made up of any one of these examples, but these will get you on the right path to understanding the way through. It's hard to believe, but we've, we've reached our time, y'all. Um, 
it's been so great sharing this this knowledge with you. Uh, I just want to say right away thank you to Sana Online for inviting me and having me be part of this. Um, thank you to you guys for checking this out and for your interest in this. If you have any questions at all, please do reach out to uh, Sana uh, with any questions, or you can reach me. Uh, I'm on all places on social media as IET Base, A Y I T I. B A S S. If you put that into any of your social media channels, you'll find me. If you add a, at Gmail to that, you will find me. Um, so please do reach out, and I look forward to sharing much more with you. Um, I think we'll be back here with Sanaa for uh, for another lesson. So I look forward to that. I look forward to hearing you all play your Caribbean basslines and write your Caribbean basslines. And please, please again reach out if and when you can. I'd love to leave you with something. Um, this year, I think since since we're since we're kicking it old school, we're thinking about. I'm thinking about my upcoming in Haitian music. I'm just gonna play. I'm just gonna play a little little bit of something, and you'll hear some melodies, and you'll hear some rhythm, and and we'll see where we end up. All right.